I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on GBN, we're exploring a powerful book. It is called The Doctor's Doctor, consultant to every doctor on every patient every day. It is a fascinating deep dive into the vital but often unseen world of pathology. It is written by a terrific author and wonderful physician. His name is Dr. Filiberto Cavazos. And this book reveals how pathologists serve as the scientific backbone of modern medicine, guiding diagnoses and patient care across every hospital department. It is an eye-opening look at an essential medical specialty that every future doctor and patient should understand. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today. We thank the team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him on TV today. And we ask viewers like you to support authors like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his amazing book. The links are below this interview. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me here today. Well, thank you for having me with you and I uh, appreciate the, fact, the opportunity. Thank you so, so much. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Wonderful work on this book. You refer to pathologists as the doctor's doctor. Why do you That's call them that? That is correct. As, uh, as a pathologist, you there's no doctor can get away without uh, uh, using your knowledge or your facts or your writings or your uh, intelligence in, in diagnosing a patient's condition. And also, of course, not only diagnosing the condition, but uh, suggesting the, the treatment necessary for each patient. So this is a cross relationship between clinician or any clinician and a pathologist, both in the hospital and, and the private practice as well. Uh, we run the laboratories to the hospital laboratories of the nation. And uh, they, this is a, a science has, has progressed so much. Like It seems like every year, every five years, Things change so much, uh, and it's all uh, it's, it's all the responsibility of pathologists to study the new science and to make it available for the doctors that uh, should depend on you for diagnosis and treatment. Absolutely, absolutely. Talk to us about the role of the pathologist for the people at home who just thinks that they're the medical examiner, perhaps. I guess it's a broader role than that. Talk to us about a, what a pathologist does. The role is much broader. And uh, unfortunately, uh, not all pathologists uh, uh, work at the same, at the same level. Uh, most pathologists are con uh, con content with uh, uh, diagnosing tissue problems like uh, cancer, like uh, the, any, any kind of uh, inflammatory disease, uh, because so many other diseases look uh, so similar and behave so similar that it's difficult to diagnose them between them so that can, the treatment can be applied that is correct instead of one that is not, uh, not correct. Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. And often um, a doctor, uh, a physician, perhaps a surgeon will excise a tumor. And then, of course, they send it to pathology to examine it. So the most critical work in many ways is taking place in the lab of the pathologist, correct? Right. That is that is where the diagnosis is made. And the diagnosis has a specific treatment that uh, that this uh, will be available to the patient, uh, to the doctor to treat him. Yeah. So yes, absolutely. Now, the, in addition to uh, to working with the doctor and making diagnosis and specifying treatment, the pathologist also works with the hospital. The doctor, the pathologist, uh, spends his time in the hospital, and therefore. There are so many things going within the in the hospital that are the, to the knowledge of the pathologist. So the pathologist participates in many committees, uh, in, in committees talking about disease as well as uh, uh, procedures and treatments and so on and so forth. So the doctor pathologist is occupied most of the time 
who are not in the office doing the working with the tissue or uh, going to the laboratory to to make sure that things work in the laboratory as they as they should. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also participating in things that are important to the hospital. Yeah. Uh, so it is. Uh, a doctor, they should start early, and it does. I mean, my day is always started before seven o'clock, and mm -hmm. ended after five p.m. Uh, there are many doctors now that. Uh, uh, and there are many pathologists that uh, they think that they're finished, that they are done because they finish with the tissues, while there's still so many other uh, needs that to, to be involved, to be a, an efficient uh, pathologist, and to enjoy the practice as they should be. Uh, yes. yeah. Some residency programs have trouble recruiting uh, medical students, graduates, to become pathologists. Tell us that. Tell us why that is. Is it because other fields are more lucrative? Tell us about that. That is a big, huge problem. It is a huge problem because pathology is such a wonderful science, and the American student, uh, the American graduate, doesn't know what you're talking about. The, the simple that the graduate, American graduate has the same feeling that the public general that the only thing that the pathologists do is autopsies and uh, deals with things of the dead body, which is absolutely ex exactly the opposite. We are involved not only from talking about patients, talking to doctors about patients, uh, being involved in specifying treatments, uh, and, but also uh, being uh, teaching, teaching areas. The pathologist is the natural teacher in the hospital because we are acquainted with the, with how most of the, all the doctors in the hospital function. Uh, we know what uh, they are thinking because we talk to them all the, every day. Uh, we consult with them every day from early in the morning until they leave and you stay. Uh, so it is a very, very active a profession effective. The problem is that the doctors, the graduating doctors, have the same impression that the people that they have found, that doctors, that pathologists only work with to do autopsies. In fact, we are doing fewer autopsies than ever. When I trained, we used to have 100% autopsies in our hospital, mm. especially because I trained in a cancer hospital in which uh, the service was provided for free. We uh, provide so that uh, the patients will agree to have an autopsy at the end. No matter where they die, they die at the hospital or die at home, they will be brought in and, and do an autopsy. And, and the certifying agencies were using autopsies as a criteria of how the hospital works because in the, when a patient is uh, in, in admitted to a hospital, and sometimes those admissions go for a long, long time, there are many things that happen, and there are many uh, things that 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 go wrong, or that go somewhat wrong, or very wrong. And and the hospital autopsy is the quality assurance that that patient had, uh, and the discussions that go along with that are the quality assurance to make sure that that patient had the best treatment possible for him or for her. Uh, if not, uh, and you know, many studies, or several studies and or a number of autopsies have shown that up in up to 40% of the, of the cases, there are errors committed in lung, in lung admissions. We're talking about all kinds of errors, but the 10% of those errors was well sufficient to change the course of the treatment or to change the whatever the medication or change something uh, that would have would have served better the, the patient better than the course of the second. But all of that is forgotten because doctors don't want to be post. They don't want to find out that there is something wrong. Uh, the hospitals don't want to post either because they don't want to know that something is wrong. And and the, the patient suffers 
because the best treatment for him or for her was not taken at the time. Mm -hmm. so, so it is important that the autopsies be in the hospital be made because they also are the source of teaching uh, lessons. Uh, people, uh, when you have an autopsy at the end of the, in many cases, not many it's unfortunate now, in such a few cases, that it is the people who treated that patient get together and talk about it. Mm -hmm. So that they, that's, that's how things can be improved. I should, actually, the reason to do autopsies is not to find mistakes, but to find the better treatment possible, to feel the better treatment possible. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. It's an important part of the checks and balances of the hospital. But, yeah, uh, without yeah, a for, doubt. For many, for many years, um, uh, there's a, uh, an association that respects hospital in, in the whole nation. And they require at least to have 50% of doses to find out just how the hospital was, as was treated patients. Mm -hmm. With uh, time, because of the uh, economic concerns, the concerns about possible malpractice and so on, you want to de decreasing slowly from 40 to 30 to 20 to 10 percent, so that even even those those uh, those societies that should be, uh, say, we need more of doses, uh, they they just ship, let it go, and we, we the people will lose on the People lose a lot, patients lose a lot because the new treatments uh, that could have been working for that patient are not put into place and so on. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. You mentioned that the College of American Pathologists need a new program to improve pathology practices. Tell us about that. Yeah. See, the, the college uh, has a, had a very successful, successful program. I don't know if you can see my book. Yep. A, a very a very successful program entitled Laboratory Inspection and Accreditation. Before those times, we were talking about the before the 70s, uh, late 60s, there was no such a thing. Uh, uh, there was there was uh, but in the 60s or 70s, people began to find out that if they sent a sample along a world limited nation. To even famous hospitals, they will have such uh, readings that they were practically useless. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, some hospital will report uh, of twenty percent uh, of twenty-five milligrams of glucose, or they will report a hundred or about uh, uh, one hundred and fifty in the same patient, in the same sample. So, uh, in the sixties. Uh, testing was not very precise, but along beginning in the 60s, automation and computerization the extraordinary things. Also, uh, the discovery of the immune, uh, the properties of the immune uh, reagents. The immune reagents are so specific that you only need a couple of molecules to diagnose uh, a, a certain uh, chemical or uh, so, so that uh, when in the sixties you needed about five cc of blood to do a glucose test, now you can um, in a less than a millimeter, uh, you can do a hundred tests. Not only do you do a hundred tests, but they are so much more precise. Mm -hmm. That uh, uh, remember, remember this poor woman who who was guaranteeing that the, the, that she could do uh, one drop of blood elizabeth holmes actually yeah. actually now this is true wow this has become true amazing uh, there's no there's no saving her anymore because she was the victim of people who who took advantage of her mm. uh, but that has happening now amazing uh, a, a few a little amount of blood is sufficient to do the 300 tests Wow, it's amazing, amazing. Not, not, not only in chemistry alone, but also in microbiology. See, the, specific, the specificity of the immune reagents is so much that, as I said, a single molecule diagnoses serious, you know. Amazing. It's, it's, 
So Amazing how quickly the science is progressing. Uh, yeah. She dreamed it. She envisioned it. It's here. Unfortunately, it's too late for her mm -hmm. um, because of her court case, I guess, it was about a bunch of different issues. But this book that you've written, Doctor, is so spot on. And hopefully it opens up the minds of medical students, graduates of medical school programs, and also the public at large, that they understand the contributions and the vital role that pathology plays in modern medicine. You can learn more about it. The name of the book is The Doctor's Doctor, consultant to every doctor on every patient every day. It is an essential guide to the science responsibility and impact of pathology in modern medicine. Doctor, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your time, your insight, and your expertise to the folks at home. I'm Logan Crawford for the Global Book Network. So long for now.